Outlaws, baby boy. And it's still to this day, there hasn't been one single other team out there that has been able to compete with the creativity that came into making that logo the what it is today. Love it. I am in complete and utter love with that logo. Having said that, our season, la I'll see our season last, uh, I guess last couple of months, uh, it just wasn't what we, what we hoped for. So the Overwatch League season one was kind of, um, I mean, I guess our perspective in the beginning was so different than our perspective now after having seen it. Um, going into it, it was kind of anybody's guess of like how the league would do, and there were you know a lot of people thinking it would be really successful, and a lot of people thought that it would just fail, and. You know, there was a lot of you know pressure against it. I think um, so. Being a player was kind of weird because you know we were just doing our thing, playing the game, staying focused on you know our role within the team and the and the, the whole league. Um, but around us, all this like incredible progress and success is happening. So it was kind of it was cool to be a part of something that was so successful so quickly um, as the Overwatch League was. But it was also it was it was weird to be a player in that from. Well, you know, watching that happen, right? Like from the perspective of just, you know, playing your matches, it doesn't really matter to you, you know, what the viewership is or how the league's doing in general, how all the other teams are doing. Um, but I think in hindsight, it was, it was really m impressive how fast things grew and changed and um, how fast like the league evolved, I wanna say. Like I'm really excited for what's gonna be different in season two and even beyond that, like it feels like the people behind the league and everybody in the league has such a like the right mentality and the right mindset that I'm just really excited to see where it goes from here. We had our highs and lows this season. Um, we definitely didn't get where we wanted to get. Um, obviously, missing playoffs was you know pretty heartbreaking for us. It's like really what we were going for for the whole season. I'm sure like every team is, but I think for us knowing that you know we're that close to it definitely made it like we never felt like it was out of reach. You know, even up to the last game, it was still within reach. Um, so in a way, that's heartbreaking. But in a way, I'm also happy about that. Right, that like. Our season wasn't over early. I think that would be like an even worse feeling as a team if you know you made it halfway through the season and you had already just lost so many games that making playoffs is unrealistic. We never really had that, um, even through our struggles. So I think that that was a big positive for us as a team. We like you know always had a chance and we you know kept giving 100% through the end, um, kept improving through the end. Um, but obviously you know not making playoffs is you know not where we want to be. Or we were hoping to you know do even better than making playoffs. You know get an even better seed. Um, so as far as like next season goes, that's definitely where we're looking to go. Like obviously the talent's there and then just some things just don't gel to the point to where, look, I don't follow Overwatch as much as other people, but I know teams, I know chemistry, and I know what it takes to win, period. I, I've been around competition long enough to know that some sometimes just the season doesn't go according to plan. Sometimes players don't perform. Sometimes players overperform and still can't you know, can outperform the other team, which has ended up what, what ended up happening. I don't feel like I can like speak for everyone as far as like what, what we've all learned. But for me personally, I feel like the biggest things I've learned are about like separating your ego from results and being able to like take a loss and not, I don't know, like be destroyed by it and not feel like you can't, you know, cause in a tournament you lose once, you should feel bad about it because if you lose twice, you're gone, right? And then like, you know, so so each loss is this incredibly important, significant thing that you like, you know, must avoid at all costs because it's only that tournament. But for the Overwatch League, I think you have to have a different mindset and you have to be able to take a loss and, you know, come back in that night or like the next day and just be totally ready to work 100%, not be emotionally affected at all. Like you have to, you have to separate yourself from the loss so that you can you know continue going forward and improve and, and get better at the game because at the end of the day like moping around or like being upset because you lost is actually a negative and it will only like make you continue to lose if you allow it to affect you so for me i had to kind of like be able to deal with it 100 percent, no matter what whether we win whether we lost whether it's close whether it's you know a blowout just you know be able to 100 percent deal with it so that i could come in the next day and not be a liability in practice. Uh, and that, that was like, I'd say the biggest skill I gained this season was being able to take losses, honestly, which is not something I, I think I ever really thought about before, but in the league, I, I felt like I had to. Yeah, so the plans for the off season are, it's really like, I think we're taking maybe a, this first month or so just to unwind, relax, do whatever, low on content, you know, low on team stuff. I think it's like a super healthy thing to do. Um, and it actually makes sense for our performance because if you play the game constantly, you get more and more, you know, stuck in your habits and you do improve and there's like, you know, you gain skills and, you know, there's definitely reasons to grind. But I think if you spend so much time playing the game consecutively and you like never take a break, 
you never get to look at the game in a new way. You, you, it's you like you're stuck in your habits and you're you're not able to learn as effectively. Whereas if you take like a week or two off from the game, I found that every time that I've done that in, in my whole life, that taking some time off of the game and coming back with like a fresh mindset and a fresh you know mentality and motivation. I always come back and I feel so much better. The plan for the future is we have a, we rented out a new workspace downtown and we're going to be going there to reinvent some systems within our team that we had kind of like fixed the weaknesses that we saw within certain systems within our, our team throughout the first season. You know, we want, we have plans to like rethink the way we communicate, you know, delegate better vocal responsibilities to different players and a lot more structure. And so we're take, we're, we want to take this time since we're not going to have many opportunities to practice in the off season because no one's really going to be practicing. Practicing. There's no major tournaments going on, so instead we're gonna focus on like the, I guess the the team's internal like infrastructure. If that makes sense, you know, the way the way that we communicate, the way we practice, how we manage our time, and try to just fix the foundation, basically. Now, what we have to look forward to is the fact that we have players trying out for the U.S. Uh, team, so we can compete in Worlds and uh, bring home another championship. The World Cup is actually a pretty big deal, I think, for the players, for the viewers. It's it's one of the most watched things for competitive Overwatch. So it's it's a really big deal. Every, every team takes it really seriously. National pride is actually really important, especially like the be the best teams that win. They, they Korea always takes it so seriously. And last year, when I was a member of the team, we um, gave it our all, you know, gave, and we didn't want to let our country down. And like it, it, it's funny, but the national pride aspect of it does come into play in, in your head. When uh, we were playing it and at uh, BlizzCon last year, the crowd chanting for, for USA was like absurd. And we were just, we we're down there on stage, there's like 5,000 people in the crowd chanting for, for our team. And like the energy there, like you can feel it. And it's like, it's an amazing experience. So within our team, we have a few people trying out that I know of. Um, Banny's trying out for Team Canada. Um, Links are trying out for Finland. We have a number of people trying out for Team USA. It's kind of interesting to see all these people coming in and playing against each other. That's going to be fun from like an observer perspective because you know there's like this personal relationship there, and they're going to like it's going to be funny to see if they're they're gunning for each other a little bit more or if they know each other's play style and maybe exploit it here and there. This year, I'm not going to be playing on um, Team USA. I like didn't I didn't I was invited to the tryouts, but I. I um, declined because I wanted to focus on other things. Uh, my plans haven't exactly been announced yet, but I'm sure they will be really soon. Um, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be involved. I'm excited to excited to be involved. Just, just going to give a shout out to the green wall, man. Like I feel like it's one of the coolest things about being on the Houston Outlaws was knowing that you're joining like an optic team and that or that like, you know, you're going to be part of that organization. And not only are you going to get like all the back end and staff that makes optic so great, uh, but you're also joining this like community really and I think like That was really awesome for me like being able to be a player and you know You're immediately there's all these people who are like, oh, you know, what's overwatch? I'm an optic fan I'm gonna watch their games and they like, you know Are so supportive of that community that they don't even care even if they don't play the game or they're not interested in the game They might like, become interested because they want to support so I feel like having that like groundswell of support as a team is like an incredible thing You know, you, you know that you have the fans behind you uh, and that always motivates you to play your best. So just gotta just gotta thank the Green Wall for that one. So I'm excited to see what we do for season two. Obviously, you know the 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 Dallas Petroleum or whatever you guys want to call them, uh, they they had a pretty good season. They 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 kind of bringing it back. You know, they they seemed dead to me for a little bit uh, because we kept on beating their ass. You know, hopefully next week, next season we'll continue to show that. You know, Texas belongs to the to the to the boys in green, the outlaws and optic. For what he has get saved right away. A good axe called the blame mill, the double ult is coming out. Rioya, they're trying to bring down CCNC, the they're hole, not though. doing enough damage. And the hole will be coming out. There it is. It pulls into him. CCNC on the outside doing so much damage. Finally gets silenced right after the BKB, but Velo's dead. And now Febby goes down. It's a triple kill for CCNC. Good game. Grats. PBD back at TI, Zai back at TI, PyCat, guess what? You're not commentating TI, buddy. You are going to play. And now CCNC, he was one of those last year, one series away from going to TI. He's going to make it. And then 33, right? So to get into TI, there was a run robin group stage of, I think it was eight teams or seven teams or something. Uh, and top seed of the group went straight on. 
uh, turned out to be VGJ. I think they went six and one, and then they won the tiebreakers. So they got the first seeding groups, and then the rest of the teams that got top five went into a playoff bracket. So it was us, Immortals, Complexity, and EG, and whoever got whoever won winners bracket went through, and then whoever won losers bracket went through. I mean, we've been working for this ever since our team started improving and ever since we started getting results at tournaments and stuff uh, from yeah earlier earlier this year. We're kind of just like, you know, this is what we're working towards. Uh, the TA qualifications is literally everything we worked for uh, this entire half year with this roster. So, of course, it's like it's a, it's a great thing for us to get the TA, but I think also at this point uh, before the qualifier, we were kind of expected to qualify especially seeing as, as NA had three slots. So I think, at least for me, it was more of a relief that we managed to get through the qualifying because we weren't, we weren't performing and playing as good as we can when we're on top. Um, and I think that's been a common theme throughout like all the qualifiers this year. We just aren't able to perform as well as when we're in this you know international land, when the stakes are super high and stuff like this. I think that's when we're at our best, but in the qualifiers, we haven't been there. So it was more of a, Huge relief to be honest, to just like, whew, it's done, we're going to TI, you know, that's out of the way. Now we can just like, take a quick break, when we come back we can just like refocus, we'll get to play TI, we're, you know, that was it. It was just relief, pretty much. As a person that's been in optics since 2006, 2006, 2008, I don't even remember. But as, as a person that's been here for the long haul, okay, I've, I've, I've never, the second that I, that I was in optic. I stayed in optic. I didn't go do something else. Uh, I, I've been I've been involved in every single moment in history of optic. I was qualifying for the international in Dota is is up there with one of the one of the biggest accomplishment, accomplishments that we were made. And, and yes, I mean that just making it there. That's how tough the competition is. Just making it there is a feat within its own. You know, for, for me, it's 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 almost come full circle, right? When we decided to step into into Dota, it was one of those moments where we're like, you know, we have an opportunity here to make the big show. You know, uh, the, the international is the the biggest prize pool in esports, period. Uh, so for me, it's super important that one, we made it, but you know, secondly, the fact that you know we have we have an opportunity any given Sunday. If we win it, obviously, I'll I'll I was gonna say I'll shave my head bald, but I'm not going to. I'm not gonna. Uh, if we do, um, I'll get some sort of tattoo to commemorate this this moment in time for for that. So uh, it won't be on my face but it will be visible, maybe on my, on my arm. Something that commemorates the fact that we won in international. But that's only if we win the international. Uh, but I'm super excited for PPD and the boys. I think this TI, I mean, people probably say this every year, but it's probably true every year as well, that this TI is probably the most stacked it's ever been. I think every team pretty much that's, that's qualified is, is a serious contender. And yeah, with that said, I mean, I also consider us a serious contender. So, um, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and say that we'll win because that's kind of, kind of absurd. But I mean, we're not coming there just to play TI, you know, we're not just like showing up for the, the Vancouver tour season or something, you know, we're we're participating and we're going to do our best to go far. Hopefully we'll go far.